Hello everybody and welcome to my beginner's guide to recording using OBS Studio. In this video I'll show you the basic settings that you need to get recording as well as how to create your own scenes to record different things. OBS Studio is of course a free multi-platform recording and also streaming suite that is free. Did I say free? I did say free. It is free and you can download it yourself at obsproject.com. I am using the latest release at the time which is release 18 for Windows. Once you download it you'll get something that looks a little bit like this. The first thing you'll want to do is go over here and click settings. And I like to set my theme to dark because it's not as blinding as, as the white one is. No racist comments there, please. But I would leave everything else here as it is and then click output. This is what you'll see from output from the get code. Definitely go up here to mode and click advanced. It'll give you much more things to play around with here. And then click this recording tab. The first thing that you'll want to do is to reset a recording path. So what this will do is it'll set where the video gets downloaded to once you are done recording. If you have not done so already, I suggest that you buy either an external hard drive or just a separate hard drive just for your recording so that you are not recording to the same drive that you have all your programs and operating system and games on because then you'll be reading and writing to the same hard drive and that can cause recording issues down the line. If you can't do that, if you're on a laptop or something, then don't sweat it for now, but keep that in mind as a potential limitation. Next up, let's talk recording formats. I am a huge proponent for multi-track audio recording. What this allows you to do is to have your microphone in one track and the game in a separate track. So after you're done recording, you can adjust their levels in post or edit your audio separately. It's, it's very, very handy and can get rid of a lot of headaches. In order to do that, you need to be recording in MP4. You can record in all sorts of different things here. I suggest you use MP4. Next up, let's talk encoders. There's really three big encoders. There's the AMD Advanced Media Framework, if you have an AMD GPU. There's also the NVIDIA Invenic uh, encoder, if you have an NVIDIA GPU. And there's X264, which can be used by either. The advantage to an AMD or an NVIDIA encoder is that it will, re it will use the resources on your computer less. And so it'll impact your frame rate and everything for your game a lot less. However, I found that it will also somewhat decrease the quality of your video. For the purpose of this video, we'll be using the X264. Let's talk bitrate. Bitrate is how much information is being recorded at any given moment in time. The higher your bitrate, the larger your file size will be, but also the better your video will be up to a point. I suggest you don't do anything lower than 2500. It'll depend on the resolution and the frame rate and your, your, what your system can handle. But I suggest you don't go lower than 2500 and then you go up with a thousand kilobit per second increments, try 3000 and 4000 and 5000, do little test recordings to see what your system can handle and what quality you're looking for. Keeping in mind that if you're going to be putting this on YouTube later, that'll, they will muck with that anyways. So you, there's no reason going too high. I use 30,000 kilobits per second. As far as rate control, there's constant bit rate and also variable bit rate. Constant bit rate will always record at 30,000 or whatever you have this set to. I like variable bit rate because if you're playing a game with a lot of action or something that needs just a little bit more bit rate, it'll, it'll ramp it up a bit to keep that quality. But if you're on something like a loading screen or something that doesn't need a lot of information because it's static, it'll reduce that bit rate. So what it does is it effectively lowers your file size while increasing the quality of your video. So I suggest you try out variable bitrate. CPU uses preset. The higher this is, the more CPU it will use, which will chug your video. So only use these ones if you have a very good CPU. I use very fast. I have a decent CPU. 
I suggest you try either very fast or super fast if you have a subpar or not a very good CPU or if you're using a laptop or something. I like very fast. Last but not least, very important, do not, do not check variable frame rate. Your video editing software works best if you have a constant frame rate. That way it doesn't kind of skip back and forth. If you have a variable frame rate, then you will probably have audio desync issues as the audio will be recorded constant and the frame rate on your video will be varying, which will kind of make the video speed up and slow down slightly compared to the audio. It's just bad news, just, just don't do it. Next up, you'll wanna click this little audio tab you can set your, this is like a bit rate kind of for, for layman's terms, uh, the sample rate for your audio. I select 48 kilohertz because that is DVD quality. That's fairly good sounding audio. You can also use 44.1 if you want, if, you, if your equipment doesn't handle 48 or above. Uh, if it does, I would set it to 48. Record in mono. I'm assuming that your equipment isn't sophisticated enough to have two different audio tracks, one for your left ear, one for your right ear. So mono will take the single audio track and it will just duplicate it across both ears so they both hear the same thing. So it also will slightly reduce your file size because you're not recording it twice. From here, you'll want to set a default desktop audio device and also mic. I have mine set to my headset, so basically anything going into my headset, be it Skype or Discord or the game or whatever, will record by default. And then the mic, I have it set to my Mackie Pro FX 8 V2 mixing board. If you have a Blue Snowball or an AT2020 or a Blue Yeti or whatever you have, maybe it's a headset mic or whatever, make sure to set this here. Under the video tab, you have your resolution. I highly suggest that you keep these the same. So I have a 1080p monitor that I record on, so that's my base rev resolution, and I output 1080p as well. That way you don't have to descale it and have audio issues, or sorry, not audio, video quality issues. Not audio issues, you wouldn't have any of that. Of course not. And then of course your frames per second. I record in 60. I suggest you record in either 60 or 30, depending on what your system can handle. If you can get a consistent constant 60 frames per second, you might as well record in that. If not, then, then click 30. If you're kind of on the fence about it, I would do 720p 60 before I did 1080p 30 because I would rather have a smooth looking video than a higher resolution because most people watch in 720p. If you can swing 1080p 60, go nuts. Just, just do it. It's great. And finally, hotkeys. You will want to set one for both start and stop recording. You can use the same one, which means on the first press it starts, on the second press it stops. I suggest you do so. I use F10. You can use F9 or whatever you want. Shift F10 or whatever you want to do there. I will show you guys how to use all this really awesome stuff down here in a later, more advanced video. Just don't worry about this for now. And that's pretty much all you need, so make sure to hit apply and okay. Now that we have all these settings set to what we want, we need to make scenes. And scenes are basically what you'll be recording. So I have one set to my desktop, which is what I'm using to record this right now. I also have one set to a webcam if I'm doing a vlog or something. And then I have separate ones for different games I play a lot. So I play a lot of Realm of the Mad God, so I have a separate scene for that one. I have one set for Paladins. I have one just for a general game recording so I can record whatever I want. So let's add a new scene. I'll just show you guys how to make a, a new scene and some of the cool things you can do with that. So you'll wanna click this plus button or right click and click add and name your scene. So we'll be doing one for Overwatch today. Perfect. Now a scene is made out of a lot of different sources. And these sources can be all sorts of things. They can be audio, they can be browser sources, which just can be a whole number of, of different things. You can do colors, you can do display or game or window capture. You can do static images, slideshows, other scenes from here if you want to, I believe, text, just all sorts of different things. The first thing I like to do is to set up my audio. So I like to set up my audio separately from the defaults. I know we set them up. You can use those if you want, but I like to add in my microphone separately here and then add an output capture 
just for my game. Now that you have your audio set up, you need to tell which audio source to go to which track. Remember, because we're doing multi-track audio here. So you'll click this little gear here next to the mixer. And right now I have my microphone going to track one and the game audio going to track two. If you're only using one track, just set everything to one. And then you can also set volumes and stuff here if you want to, you don't need to. Just make sure you set them to separate tracks there. Excellent. Now the next thing you probably want is a game. So let's go ahead and do a game capture and we'll set this to Overwatch. Actually, I already have one already. Overwatch game capture. There it is. Now I am actually in Overwatch at 720p right now just because otherwise I couldn't get it on my second monitor with my other OBS that I'm using to record. So what you'll want to do is right click here, unlock the preview, and you can just snap it and it'll fill up the screen. Another thing you can do here is right click, go to transform and just fit to screen and it'll do that as well. But let's uh, let's dress this up. Let's add some more stuff. So let's add some images. And the first thing I want to add is maybe a lower bezel. And that's what it looks like. So let's add that there at the bottom. Just add some flare. Let's add another image. And I already have one set here, but just for the, the sake of it, let's do just a webcam bezel. There we go. And it'll give you this guy here. Browse for your image and open that guy up. You'll see what it looks like. And then that is too big for my liking. So let's go ahead and place it where it needs to be. And we'll, we'll scale it down. Maybe, maybe something like that. That looks, that looks fairly good. And of course, if you can't, if you're not getting this little red box to scale, of course, make sure that lock preview is not set. If lock preview is on, you can't adjust anything. So make sure to right click here, unlock your preview. If you're not getting a preview at all, like this, then make sure to right click and enable your preview. And then of course, from here, we could add a video capture device like my Logitech C920 webcam and put that behind it. I don't want to be on a webcam right now, to be honest with you, but that's how you do it. And then you add, would add it here. Now, keep in mind that everything here is overlapping layers. So the, the layer on top, in this case, the webcam bezel is higher up than this one here, or let's say the, uh, the Overwatch. Let's, let's move this guy up. You'll see what happens. We moved him above this guy and he disappeared because he's on a lower, lower one. So you want to make sure they're, they're in a good order here. Whatever you want on top is, is on top, basically. Now you'll notice here that there's a little sp space here to add a Twitter and a YouTube thing. So let's go ahead, let's add a text. And I have one set up already, Seattle Gamer. There we go. And we can just drag this guy over here. Perfect. And if you click on this guy, you can actually use the arrow keys to adjust it one pixel at a time. If you want just a little bit more precision, we'll add the same text because you can add the same thing twice if you really want to. And we can just kind of adjust that to where we want to be. And that, that looks pretty good. I, they're not quite exactly the same. Adjust that guy down. I think that, that looks good like that. So now we have a pretty good scene. I'm going to show you guys browser sources because these are kind of cool. I have one set up here for a sub counter. If you're interested, I can show you how I got this. But basically, this takes my, my YouTube subscribers uh, in real time and displays them here. So if somebody subscribes or unsubscribes, it'll change this counter. And it, there's a little goal, goal thing here. And there'll be a little pop-up that, that if we hit that goal, there'll be a little pop-up here at the top that, that says something. So there's all sorts of different things you can do with browser sources. So definitely download the OBS Studio with the browser sources and we can play around with that if you want. That is basically how you make a scene. And of course, to show you guys that the, the audio works, let me just go in here and I will just add some music in the background. Uh, maybe about there, perfect. <clears throat> wow, hello. Hello, uh, Diva's crotch, uh, or I guess that's the mech's crotch or whatever. But anyways, that is how you use OBS Studio to record. I'll be doing a separate video on how you use it to stream, which will be very similar to this one. 
and then I'll do a follow-up video later if you want to know how to use all the other different settings and a lot of other cool stuff that you can do. Uh, like for instance, studio mode you can set here to play transitions. You can transition between the two all cool like if you want to. That's kind of cool. There's all sorts of cool stuff you can do. You can do a lot of stuff with this program. It's amazing for the price, which is free. Definitely download it, play around with it, get used to it, find out what works for your computer. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. I'll try and help you out with whatever you're having issues with. But that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And I will see you in the next episode.